This was a uh, example of administratively us making sure that we're smoothing that this transition, giving people the opportunities to get right with the law. President Obama this week defending the 24th time he has unilaterally changed or delayed his health care law without going back to Congress. And many are now questioning whether the president is taking his executive authority too far. Joining us from Utah, Republican Mike Lee, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And here in Washington, California Congressman Javier Becerra, chair of the House Democratic Caucus. Senator Lee, let me start with you. The Obama administration contends that it has broad authority under the tax code to implement laws in ways that will encourage compliance. Given that authority, doesn't President Obama have, whether you like it or not, the ability to keep changing Obamacare? Look, if that kind of broad regulatory mandate buried somewhere within the Internal Revenue Code can authorize the president to do what he's purporting to do here, then there's almost no limit to his authority. And we have a government of one. We have a super executive and super legislator vested in the president of the United States. That is, of course, not what we have, as any high school civics student can tell you. The president knows this is wrong, and it's not defensible. He's violating the Constitution. He's exercising power that doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the American people. Uh, Congressman Becerra, i got to say, I went back and I read not the whole 2,000 pages, but I read the key parts of the health care law, and it seems to be very specific when it comes to the employer mandate. Let's put it up on the screen. Effective date, the amendments made by this section, this is in the employer mandate, the amendments made by this section shall apply to months beginning after December 31st, 2013. But, Congressman, as you well know, uh, unilaterally, without coming back to Congress, the president has delayed the employer mandate from 2013 to 14 to 15 and now to 16. What gives him the authority to rewrite what seems to be a very clear law? Chris, it's the same authority that every president has had to make sure that the laws are administered or, and executed in a way that helps all Americans. Uh, the president is simply providing small businesses with the flexibility they need to be able to start adopting the law. Small businesses support the flexibility, and the president is making sure that we implement this in a way that puts into effect the purpose of the law, which is to give people more health security. So if this were against the Constitution, Someone would have sued by now, and, and the president would have had to stop. The reality is the president has used his executive powers less often than almost every president before him. This gets to a, a larger issue, and I want to follow up with you, and then we'll bring in uh, Senator Lee, and that is the president's declaration that he is going to use executive action when Congress won't go along with him. It set up an interesting debate. Take a look. And, and I've got a phone, uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. The president says he has a pen and a cell phone, but uh, the American people have a constitution, and the constitution doesn't give him the authority to unilaterally change the law. He's got to come to the Congress to do that. In fact, Article 1, Section 1 of the Constitution gives Congress all legislative powers. Forget the politics for a moment, Congressman Becerra. I would think as a congressman, you would be upset at the idea of any president. And you're right. There are other presidents of the other party who have done it. Any president going around Congress to this extent. If you were going around Congress to rewrite law, that would be different than trying to use the flexibility you're given by the Congress to uh, execute the law. The president is not trying to rewrite. The president has never said, I'm going to go it alone. The president has said... I'm going to work with Congress, but where Congress decides not to act, remember, this is the, perhaps the, the greatest do-nothing Congress we've seen. You have a Republican speaker but, but, who said but, but he for, will not, for, me, he will sir, be the brick when, wall when the law that says, will not permit the president to act. So the, the president is trying if, to if implement I may, the sir, laws. When the, when the law says, the health care law, the employer mandate shall begin after December 31st, 2013, isn't that pretty specific? It will begin after December 2013. The president in 2016. Said, well, the president said, we'll start it after 2013, but we're going to make sure it works well for small businesses. And the fact that what he's trying to do is make things work, when Congress can't pass bills, when Congress shuts down the government, the, the president can't just sit there. He, what he's saying is, well, yeah, I won't I mean, wait. It's, it, that's the way the Constitution's written. The president is supposed to just sit there. No, 
is just supposed to sit there? If we have an emergency, the president is just supposed to sit there? What if we're, if about we're an international emergency. security we're not attack. about an emergency with Obamacare. Well, but you never know if something might happen if we just sort of twiddle our thumbs. We're not talking about a foreign threat here, sir. I, I would hope that the, we would never have a chief executive who would twiddle his thumbs because Congress can't get its act together. Okay, and Senator, we need to move. We need Sen to move. Senator Lee, two questions about twiddle, presidents twiddling their thumbs. If you look at the first five years of the recent two-term presidents, and we have a graph on the screen, Obama, in fact, has used executive orders much less often than his predecessors going back to Reagan. And, and this is the question uh, that Congressman Becerra raised, and I think it's a legitimate question for you, sir. If, as a member of Congress, you feel the president is doing something unconstitutional, you said that, violating the Constitution, why don't you take him to court? Okay, first of all, as to taking him to court, there are many instances in which a president might violate the Constitution, uh, but in which, for a variety of practical reasons and some constitutional reasons, the courts might not end up exercising jurisdiction over that case. It's very difficult, for example, for someone to challenge in court the president's suspension of the employer mandate. It's difficult to identify the kind of plaintiff that would suffer the kind of injury in fact that's particularized to the plaintiff, so as to be able to establish Article Three standing in court. Can I can I ask you about that? As to the question, of, may, may I just ask you about that? Because I know that that's the answer yes. that you guys give. Well, it's hard to establish standing, and and I'm not a lawyer, but it would seem to me, couldn't you say, as a member of the Senate, hey, we passed this law. It said that the law will go into effect uh, on December 31st, 2013, and the president has ignored our law. So, as a member of the Senate, I have standing to protest that. Yeah, there are some who have suggested that. There are others who have suggested that under the relevant Supreme Court precedent, it might be difficult for members of Congress even to establish standing in those circumstances. But uh, on the broader question, Chris, of the fact that we've had presidents in both parties using executive orders and, and that this president hasn't necessarily issued more executive orders than other presidents, I've got two responses to that. Uh, first, Chris, not all executive orders are equal. You have some executive orders that are plainly authorized by law in which Congress has delegated the president to make these kinds of decisions. That's really not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here are decisions like those involving the suspension of the employer mandate that is not only not authorized by the statute, it's flatly inconsistent with what the statute says. Secondly, to the extent that presidents in both political parties have strayed from the law and have acted unilaterally, outside their delegated authority from Congress and from the Constitution, that's wrong. And the fact that other presidents may have done it in the past doesn't justify it now. Okay, let me, so let me, we let me, can't let me. stand back and simply ignore this. We can't ignore the fact that we've got a president who is acting as if he's got a government of one simply because he can't always get exactly what he wants out of Congress. All right, let's talk about the merits of this latest delay, not the legality, but the, but the merits of it. This is a delay of the employer mandate for companies that... Uh, small to medium-sized companies that have between 50 and 99 employees. Congressman Becerra, isn't this really all about politics, that the White House was worried that those companies were either going to fire people or reduce their hours to below 30 hours so they'd be considered part-timers, so that they wouldn't be laid off just before the November election, or that those companies would throw these people onto the, you know, take away their coverage and throw them onto the exchanges and pay the fine. Isn't this really about protecting the president politically and Democrats like yourself? Uh, Chris, it's about flexibility for those businesses, because what we're seeing is for the first the business, time in our country. The law country, was passed in 20, try to it, finish the law was response. passed in 2014. Yeah, this is the first time oh, wait, in our I'm history. I'm sorry, it was passed in 2010. This is the first They've time, had four Chris, years. If you'll, if you'll recall, this is the first time in our history that we're actually going to give Americans a chance to have health security, where they can have the peace of mind that they will not go bankrupt simply because they used their hospital or doctor. Sir, forgive me, that's boilerplate. I'm asking you, the, the, the small companies have had the, the knowledge of what the employer mandate was going to be since the law was passed in 2010. They've had four years. Why do they need flexibility now? Because you're seeing quite a few changes that are taking place that require the insurance carriers and the employers to take on certain responsibilities. And you want to make sure that those responsibilities are taken on in a way that work for not just the business person, but also the employees. And what we've seen is over 12 million Americans today have that health security that they didn't have before. That's important. Make it work right that you, you tweak it here or there. That's within the president's discretion. And it provides the flexibility that that small business owner would like to have. Senator Lee, does uh, Congressman Becerra persuade you? 
Uh, no, not at all. Look, this is a shameless act, uh, a, a shameless power grab that is designed to help the president and his political party achieve a particular outcome in a partisan election. And that's wrong. Uh, look, the Constitution doesn't give the president that power. This power belongs to the people. The people delegate that power to their senators and to their congressmen. They don't give it to the president to act unilaterally, and there's good reason for that. The whole reason why we have a Constitution is to help prevent, to protect us against the excessive concentration of power in the hands of a few, or here in the case of the hands of one person. And, 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 and sir, I may, we've got violating 30 seconds. That principle, we can't Senator, allow I'm sorry happen. to interrupt. We've got 30 seconds left. I just want to ask you on the merits what about this argument? Well, the companies need flexibility. Okay, so on the merits, if the companies need flexibility, then the solution there is not to ignore the law, to pretend that the law allows this sort of thing to happen. The solution is for the president to come to Congress and make the case to Congress on the policy merits of this question that Congress needs to act. And then it's up to Congress to act at that point. It is not the president's prerogative to simply make this the law by the stroke of the executive pen. Senator Lee, Congressman Becerra, thank you both so much for coming in today. Thank we'll you. stay on top of all of the story, and I suspect we'll have you both back to continue to debate it. Thank you both.